I just got back from the Chillicothe Coin Show in Ohio, and I have the biggest show buys yet. You won't believe what I've got. i got some great stuff. Like I said, it's going to take me a while to process all of this. I'm going to try to share it as fast as I can. Uh, all, I mean, I just got a lot. I'm, I'm going to do a real quick scan here. As you can see, I got a lot of graded stuff. And I'm going to share that with you. So anyways, before I do that, I want to give a shout out to Nathaniel. He came to the show and met me. He watches my videos, him and his dad. And I am your fan and very happy to be able to fill a hole in your type collection. He's got a type collection he's collecting. So here's a big shout out to you, Nathaniel. I'm very proud of you for collecting the coins. So let's get started on this. Let's go with the easy stuff. I bought these, saved from the melt. Okay, these are on the website, but they were saved from being melted. And I'm hoping we get some more this week as well. And really, I mean, I got some rolls of Walking Liberty. And uh, I got some real nice Franklins. Now, I paid, you know, melt for these. Uh, about six fifty dollars a piece in that range, around... 13 times face and so basically $130 a roll I was able to cherry pick those see these here are kind of special I'm going to go through these and probably card them up and sell them separate so they don't fall out of there and see if you can see it but these were just in an old box just beaten up banged up and underneath all kinds of different grades of coins so I picked them out saved them from just being rolled up and whatever so we'll we'll have those carded and few of those will sell different dates and mint marks, things like that. I've got some more silver certificates uh, here that are actually kind of nice. Some of them might a little bit, uh, you know, bent a little. Nice crisp ones. i got some star notes there. You know, like I said, I'll, I'll eventually get this process. I'll do everything I can to get it up. I bought this. And I had to take the good with the bad. But I bought... 34 large cents of different dates and mints. Now, some of them, like I said, there there's some calls in here, but I paid ten dollars a piece for them. Some of them will sell for fifteen, some will sell for five, and some of them will sell over twenty or in the twenty dollar range. So, I mean, I'll probably do pretty good overall. But you know, like I said, there there's some okay ones in there. Yeah, they're all right, but you know, they're behind plastic. Once you get them out from behind plastic, that's one of the things. They've been in here and they've been moving around people and uh, touched them. And the plastic on this, the mylar, gets scratched and holes in it. And you can't really see the coin all that well a lot of times. So I won't know for sure how well I did there, but I did all right. I think I'll do pretty good on those. Then I had another lot. And this has things like presidential dollars in it. There's the proofs. Um, it's just a whole box. He offered the whole box to me for $140. There's about 200 pieces in it. So there's silver dimes, uh, proof dimes, and things like that. I don't even know what I got. I don't know how well I did on that. But I went through and counted it and took a risk, took a chance on it. I also got some more of the 2020 silver maples. I have sold a couple of them already. Now those I already have up on the site. Then um, I had some more large cents that um, I bought. I got a 56, I got a 40. Um, they're just, you know, all different. Like I said, they're just your normal county see them in these Mylar holders, really. I got a few more of those. So I went out, I wanted to get some copper, so I just bought some large cents. And I'll get through them and uh, get my dates and get them in the system here because what I do when I buy something you know I put in I take out the money that in my point of sale system that I have and once I take it out then I have to take that inventory that same amount and put in what I pay for each coin unless it's just a big old lot and I can put it under miscellaneous or something like that that way I'm taking out the same amount of money I'm putting in because I do use a point of sale system so I can pay my sales tax and and keep track of inventory and things like that. It's called Lightspeed. It's just some Lightspeed cloud thing that I use. I pay so much a month for it. I got some of the normal Morgans that you see up on the site and see me selling. You know, 1885-0. 
a real beautiful coin. Those are all 64s. I got an 87, an ADS. And you know, your ADSs, they're always, seem to always be really nice. Yeah, proof like qualities to them. And O2O, different ones like that. Not anything real special, but they're really nice cherry pick coins that I picked. Then I got a bunch of 65s, which I'll show you a couple of them. I got a few of those. I had to pay a little more for these. I paid almost close to 100 for them. The nice 65 coins. Yeah, the NGC, I did get some PCGS. Yeah, it's really nice. I can tell you, I went through all the 65s, and he had several 66s and a 66 plus in his case. I didn't buy any of those because they were 81s, and those coins look just like the ones I sent to PCGS. I sent 10 of the coins out of the 81s rolls that I bought, um, that I showed in the last or uh, one of the previous videos. Then I bought here, I bought two peace dollars. Now I had three, but I sold one at the show. And these are 65. They got a little bit of natural toning on them. You know, really nice coins. I got those. I've got some 63s, you know, your normal 63s that you see. But, you know, I, I, like I said, they're pretty nice ones. Then I bought a shield nickel, a U55. Not a bad, bad looking coin. I bought a couple... Uh, Buffalo nickels. I got a 23.64 and I got a 19.13.65. There's a focus on that one and then this one. And uh, I try to get a variety uh, for everybody that's interested. You know, I wanted to do that and I, I bought an uh, 1807 large cent. It's an NGC holder. It's kind of hard to see. And it's graded very good eight brown. And I've got some more bust, cat bust halves. And I've got a real nice one here. And I'll tell you, one of the things that you notice, and I'm kind of picky, I, I try not to pick problem coins. I'm trying to overlook those and not buy them, even if it's something I might need. But you'll see a lot of that, a lot of problem coins, and you just have to pass them up. I mean, it's just only, I just, they're hard to get rid of. Now, if you want to fill a hole in your collection, yeah, that's fine. I've got some, you know, random Indian cents. You know, I just picked out an 1860. For whatever reason, I, I thought I needed an 1860. I'm not sure. I did get a 1908S. That has the Liberty on it. So you're talking something in the, it's, it's close to very fine. I mean, we'll see. I'll take a look at it outside of the package. And But then, if those of you who don't know, the S mint mark is right underneath the wreath. You see it right there? Those, the only Indian cents to have a mint mark are the 1908 and the 1909S. And the 1909S is the better one. And then I got a really nice um, 82cc. There's some of this I might be submitting for grading to get in a holder. Sometimes I do this because I want a grade. If I pay Mint State 60 price for this, and I can send it off and get a 65 price or a, or a 64 or whatever. I can get a little more out of it. But, you know, the thing of it is sometimes it's not worth it. So this one right here is an 82cc. I paid $190 for it from a dealer that was set up at the show. I would like to get 220 because I think it's a solid 64. If I send it off and have it graded, then I'll have another $35 in it or $30 in it. So then I'm in it at 220 bucks. Can I sell it for 250? Yeah, you might, but I mean, then you're holding it up. Now, and I, like I said, I got to make my decisions on it. And then what if it hits 65? I mean, some of my 65s here are, are similar to this, you know, in appearance on the cheek and all and in the marks. So that's one of the things I think about when I'm doing this. I'm here some more 64. Let's see. I got um, some walking halves, uh, real nice ones. And they're half dollars, of course. That's what we call the halves. You know, real nice coins, a 1945. I got a 1942S. And then I got this one here. This is the Nevada Silver Collection Hort. So it's mid 65. It's a 45S. 
you know. And Franklin's, I got some Franklin halves. I got a 1954S and an Annex holder. Then I got this 1963 Mint State 65. Real nice luster on this coin. Yeah, just beautiful. Then I bought a a 1918S AU55 standing quarter, and boy, I'll tell you, it's a nice one. Really like that coin. Here's the reverse of it. It's a nice coin. Boy, I'll tell you what, it almost looks AU58. Uh, it's, it's a nice one. So then I also, a couple of the highlights, um, I end up getting a 1921 peace dollar roll. Um, this coin has a shot at, at, at the Mint State 60. I think that the dealer had it a little undergraded. Some people have trouble. I did do a video on grading 21s. I think they had it a little undergraded because of the weak strike. You know, and you try to tell them, they're like, hey, price is on it. That's what I want out of it. So, you know, because I always try to educate because I'll tell you, not all dealers know everything. So I bought um, some nice peace dollars. I bought a, a 27 here. That's a nice 63. I bought a 34, which I'll tell you what, if it don't look, it looks mint state. I mean, it's nice. And then um, it's AU58 on that one. And then 34Ds is 62, which, you know, it almost looks like it could be a little better in 62, but, you know, you're going to get that. You're going to have that. You're going to see a lot of coins. When you see as many coins as I do on a weekly basis, you're going to see some coins that don't look as good as others. I got a nice little dime here. It's the 43 is 65. But um, I got a proof. I got a 41 proof 66 Mercury dime. It has one little spot of toning on it there. But you know, that is a really nice coin. I bought it because I liked it. I don't typically buy these proofs, but you know, that's a, a really nice looking coin there. So I got that, you know, and I got some, I got a 34. Now the, the dealer that sold me this said that he found it in a roll that he bought. Didn't know it was in there, I guess. And it's a nice coin there. It's probably grade 62. Yeah, it's got the, uh, Really nice details on it. And then I got a 93-0. You know, for those of you who don't know, 93, 94, 95 are real difficult years to find and to find them problem free. You know, that's even a even more difficult. So a lot of them been cleaned and played with and messed with. I got a 96-0. Based off the breast feathers on this one, this one's an AU-50. You know, and I, I did pretty good. I mean, you know, you, like I said, you, the more you know, the more you can make in this business. So learn your coins, learn your grades and things like that. Learn what years and mints, you know, jump in value. You know, 96.0, when you start getting around an AU, you're starting to get into some money. It starts, starts being worth some a uh, little more than usual. And I got a nice 94.0 here. Um, it's also looking close to AU50. Extra fine 45 at the least. It's a very strong, very strong if it's extra fine 45. And I call these extra fine 49, 48 because they're really in that close range, you know, but, but close enough to where they're probably going to get the AU50. If you get on Heritage and you look at breast feathers on the AU50s, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's all about the wear pattern when you're grading these coins. So then... I also got a really nice, and the holder's bad. This is a sex holder, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, but, you know, it's an 1809 over six, and it's a half cent. You're not going to be able to see it very well. And you know, the holder needs buffed out on this, so I'm trying to show it. But I needed a half cent, and uh, I don't know. I might take it out of this sex holder because I... You can't really see the coin, and it's such a thick, clunky holder. I'm really not a big fan of the holders. Then um, I got a 78 7 tail feather. 
It's Penn State 62. When I say seven tail feathers, you're counting the tail feathers there underneath the actual olive branch and the arrows. Okay? So, you know, you've got seven and eight, and you've got seven over eight, and all those different ones. So that's what I mean when I say that. And then I bought this. Um, a customer asked me to get it. And I'll tell you what. This, this has a little story behind it here. Here's, it's a gold mercury dime. I'm going to take it out of this here. It's a gold mercury dime. Now, these, when they, these are from the Centennial releases because you have the standing quarter, you have the walking half dollar, and you have the dime to commemorate, you know, 2016, basically, the 1916 to 2016. And these were, when they released, they were some money, and they'd come down. Well, the dealer was like, I paid two fifteen for this, you know, and it's a tenth ounce. And he said, you know, I'll take a loss. I want to sell it. I want to get rid of it. I've had it sitting here. Just free it up. I'll take 170 You know, and I had bought, I was buying a lot off this dealer, and I got on eBay, and it was, and it was selling for up to $259. And I told him, I said, look, I'll, I'll pay you the 215 you have in it. And he's like, he's like, really? And I said, yes. I said, why would, there's no sense in doing that. If I can make 30 40 bucks on it, I mean, that's pretty good for a gold coin. You're making, sometimes you don't make that much on a gold coin, a small one. So I'm going to sell that for, you know, to the, to the guy. I got a pretty good deal, so I'll sell it and give him a good deal. One of the other things that I got, and I really love this coin. I wish that it was released cheaper. Um, the dealers were selling. Um, they were wanting to unload some inventory. Some of them had bought some big collections. And they were trying to free up stuff. I probably could have bought more. They didn't bring everything they wanted to sell. Uh, it was a small show, but it was a lot of people there. So a lot of people said they had a really great show. So this one here is the Apollo it was released in 2019. It's the five ounce hockey puck is what we call them. And you can see this is one of my favorites. Obviously being a sci-fi fan, I kind of like this kind of stuff. The dealer said that he paid $225 for these. Now when they were released, they were like $240 something, I think it was, somewhere around that range when we bought a few of them. We sold ours. And he sold this for, to me for 175 so I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to buy that. I should be able to, you know, sell it for 200 or whatever. I mean, it, to me, it's worth it. I, I wish it was would have went up. We basically bought them, like all of us, we thought maybe we'd speculate a little bit, and maybe it'll go up. This will be one of the few. Well, it really hasn't. So anyways, that's my show buys. Uh, like I said, I didn't show you every little single thing. And, and I'm going to try to get do my best to get all this processed and, and get it up for everybody to sell. I know some people probably email me about a couple of things maybe they want. You know, I'm th probably uh, the 21 and the 28 and the piece dollars. They're really nice. They probably need to be in a holder. And to me, I put stuff like that in a holder because they're getting they're in these two by twos and they're going to get scratched up and they're getting passed around. I'd rather get those in a nice collection that someone appreciates the graded coins. Because the coins like this, you don't see them out in the wild very much. And I call it wild, I mean, you're talking about coins that could have been in an old bag or something. And someone took them out and then they put them in these holders. To see these like this in this condition, unmolested, uncleaned. You know, to me, I feel like I'm preserving them by putting them in holders and sending them up and having them graded. And yeah, I might make more money on them. I mean, that's the whole idea behind it. As much as you can make. I put a lot of money in these coins, you know. Uh, oh, there's one other one here. And, and actually, I forgot. <laughs> I didn't mean to forget this one. This is a biggie, man. <laughs> I got this buffalo right here. See that? What does it say? I got a three-leg buffalo. You see, when you're looking at the three-leg, you want to look down here from... In, right in between the legs and it kind of looks like there's a little stream coming down also the fakes you'll see some marks in there well that's actually not on the die the reverse die is a bit used to call it a braided but it, it kind of worn down and they tried to save it and redo it the Denver Mint did that a lot as you know the 22 no D sin I mean there's some things going on then well they accidentally removed part of the leg on this off the die and created what we call the three-leg buffalo. You know, so I got a really good deal on it. It looks very fine. It was actually found in a bag of nickels. Someone just found this. So there we go. So 
thanks for watching my latest video and all the sharing here I wanted to show everybody and have a great day.